Hey, it's Tom, and this is Canon's 50mm f1.8 STM2. In this video, I'll be talking about the lens's build quality, bokeh, image quality, my overall impressions, and recommendations about the lens. I'll also show some photos that I've taken with the lens as well. This lens is very compact and small, although it's not a pancake lens size. It's maybe about twice as big. Um, but it still only sits out about four centimeters or so, an inch and a quarter from your camera, so it's pretty compact, especially if you don't use a lens hood with it. And as you can see, it has a metal mount, which will give it a bit more longevity when you're inserting it and removing it from your camera. Moving along to the autofocus, manual focus switch, one comment that I have about this, cam is this lens is that it might just be mine, but this is a little bit difficult to move sometimes. It really does take a significant amount of pressure to flick the switch, um, which is unfortunate, but most people won't be doing that super frequently, so I don't think that that's a really big issue, but it is something that I don't love about the lens. The focusing distance is 1.1 feet or 0.35 meters, which is reasonably close, but it's not a macro lens, so you can't get that close. So I have the lens attached to my 6D. So the focusing mechanism of this lens is fly-by-wire, which means that when you turn the focusing ring, it's sending electronic signals to the camera to move the lens forward and backwards so it's not doing it mechanically. And there is a very, very, very slight delay when you turn the ring and when the camera lens moves in and out. The other thing about this is that it will not automatically retract, so if you're focused on something that's nearby, this lens will be sticking out, and it will stay like that when you turn off the camera, and that's not the best or safest condition to store the lens in. Um, so you will want to aim at or focus at infinity in order to retract the lens, and now it's flush against the edge of the lens and this is the better way to store it. The other thing about manually focusing with this lens is that it will, you have to tap, tap the shutter button in order to get it to let you do manual focusing, which is a little bit annoying sometimes. It would be nice if you could just always turn the focusing ring and get it to auto, you know, get it to focus, but sometimes you have to tap that um, and if you haven't been focusing recently or half pressing the shutter button recently then it's not going to work right away. As you can see the lens does have a fairly low profile and it doesn't stick out a tremendous amount so this lens is definitely small enough to use as a travel lens although it's not the smallest lens out there it's one of the smaller ones and just about the smallest one that's not a pancake lens. So this lens does get good bokeh, which is the sort of out of focus elements, and it gives the photograph a little bit of a three-dimensional effect, and a lot of people like that. It sort of makes your photos more interesting, and they pop a little bit more of the subject. Um, and this lens is able to get good bokeh because it has a wide aperture, which allows you to get that narrow depth of field. And that's what gives you bokeh. That also means that this lens is good in low light situations, so you don't need to use a tripod necessarily with this lens. And although it doesn't have image stabilization, it doesn't really need it a tremendous amount because it is a shorter focal length and it does have a, very, you know, a relatively fast, um, you know, wide aperture. The lens can be good for taking portraits, but one thing to keep in mind is that it can be a little bit easy to overdo it with the bokeh. Um, and what I mean by that is you can be focused on one part of the subject's face and then other parts of the subject's face may not be in perfect focus because the, the depth of field is so narrow. So you don't always have to go to f1.8 when you're using this lens and sometimes um, stopping down a stop or two can actually give you better results. So in terms of in image quality, this lens is able to get um, a lot of great colors and great sharpness. If you're just starting out in DSLR photography and you have a kit lens or two, I think that this is a great um, first lens to buy in addition to that because it's very affordable 
Um, it's one of the most affordable Canon lenses out there and it's a very versatile focal length and you can use it for portraits, you can use it for um, nighttime photography and overall I think it's just a very good lens. Uh, if you have one of the previous generations I wouldn't necessarily upgrade, uh, it's not a must. Uh, there are some nice incremental upgrades but uh, no, no sort of showstopper that I think demands that you sell your previous generation one to buy this. If you have any questions about the lens, feel free to post them in the comments below, and I will try to answer if I can. And uh, if you'd like to subscribe, I would definitely appreciate that. And until next time, take care.